Yo, what up guys and welcome back to EVE Online. Now we're going to start off right where we left off last episode. And that was, uh, we were pretty much ready to undock. So, let's go ahead and undock and let's continue guys. We undock here and then a nice little animation. Captain, I have run several scenarios that could explain the mystery signal air discovered at the mining site. According to my calculations, the probability that the situation is unrelated to the attack on the cloning facility is exceptionally small. One in 37 million to be exact. Let us make haste and walk to the site immediately. Alright, so let's warp to the site. So, we already got a... Predetermined destination. Warp drive active. Oh, get the the grid loading up here. Jeez. This is a big change. The grid loaded up pretty insane. The scale of Air's mining operation is rather impressive for such a young corporation. They must be remarkably well funded. It is little wonder that Miss Calatrix would suspect espionage. Further speculation will have to wait. We're being hailed by that orca. You must be the fresh meat Vesper told me to expect. Elias Peltonen's a name, mining's a game. But you're not just here to mine, are you? We're here to assist in any way we can with locating the source of the unusual signal you've intercepted. Unusual's one way of putting it. Pain in my ass is another. The signal's bouncing around these asteroids like a Fetto hopped up on a bad booster. Can't get a lock on its source with all these rocks in the way. Miss Calatrix has outfitted us with a mining laser upgrade that should clear several of those rocks away. Good old Vesper, always ten steps ahead. Now, let's put that bad boy to use. Alright, so we're going to access the mining tab here. On the overview right above that, so there should be a mining tab. The best way to blend in is by getting your hands dirty with the crew. Some miners fly solo, but a project this big isn't exactly a one-man show. Sometimes the only way to get shit done is with a fleet. I bet this is the first time you mined with a crew. No offense or anything, you've just got that shiny new pod smell on you. Follow my lead and you'll be mining like a pro in no time. Let's start with that asteroid over there. Alright, so we'll select it here on the overview. If your competence matches your confidence, we are in good hands indeed, Mr. Peltonen. Captain, let's approach the asteroid. And so we'll hit approach here. Please, call me Elias. Mr. Peltonen makes me feel like an old man. My old man, specifically. Miserable son of a bitch. Just about spat in my face when I left his crusty old Caldari corp to make my own way. Sincerest apologies, Elias. Our first name basis shall commence immediately. Good. I like to keep things informal here. It keeps morale up. This crew's full of people like me, following the siren song of sweet, sweet independence. Doesn't hurt that the money's good, too. Alright, so he said hit approach. Captain. We're now within range of the asteroid. We should stop here. All right, we're going to hit our stop. Or let's uh, learn some of the sh keyboard shortcuts, which is uh, control space. Hit control space, and that will uh, get your ship to stop. Here we are. You ready to rock? Get it? Rock? Just a sprinkle of mining humor for you. Lock onto that asteroid, Captain. 
All right, and then same thing that we did with the uh, hostels. We're gonna hold down control on our keyboard and we're gonna left click it. Now is the time to activate your minor module, Captain. The length of the module's activity, most commonly known as a mining cycle, will impact the amount of ore you collect. For now, I recommend allowing the module to run in full cycles to obtain the highest yield possible. All right, so we're going to activate it. We'll stop with the afterburner. I forgot that I had that on. All right, let's activate this. There's something spectacular about a fresh asteroid, isn't there? Play your cards right and that giant hunk of rock becomes a giant pile of riches. You can view your very own pile of rocks, as Elias puts it, in your cargo hold. It's actually ore, not rocks. But I assume Elias is resorting to basic linguistic wordplay. A very human tendency. <laughs> it's a big ass rock, lady. All right, so let's open up our inventory here. It might not look like much, but that's not just a pile of ore. It's a pile of possibilities. You can sell it, refine it, trade it. The choice is yours. Now, time to quit ogling your inventory. This asteroid's almost dry. Now let's close it. Harvesting resources is one of the best ways to earn money in New Eden. And if you're going to make it as a capsuleer, the one thing you got to know is that money is king. Hell, with enough isk? You'll be able to buy yourself a sweet ride like that venture over there. That's one down. And now, on to the next. Hey, I, like, it starts you off zoomed in, so... <laughs> you gotta zoom out every time. Right, so we're probably gonna do the same exact thing again. Follow me, Captain, and stick close. This asteroid field can be a bitch to navigate. Right, so it looks like this time they wanted us to uh, orbit, which is a, a good idea. It's always a good idea to orbit. You don't stand still. So we'll hit orbit on that. You better hustle or my guys will drain that asteroid dry before you get there. If you go Yeah, we'll hit the afterburner here. This time I'll remember to turn it off. And then what's the range on here? So we should be at 10 km. And so we should be getting close now. We're now close enough to target the asteroid. Once it's targeted, lock on. All right, so we'll lock on to it. Just like that last asteroid. Once you've got your target in your sights. And we'll start mining. Looks like you're a natural at this. Keep it up, and Vesper will be offering you my job soon. Elias, are there any words of wisdom you find particularly valuable for new miners? Oh, man. Where to start? First off, you gotta know the difference between raw ore and refined minerals. What we're doing right now is mining ore in its raw state. For someone just learning the ropes, selling that ore is the quickest way to make isk. But you can also reprocess ore into minerals. Take Tritanium, for example. You can't find that stuff in the wild. You've got to get your hands on some raw ore, like Feldspar, and then refine it into Tritanium. You can sell those minerals or use them to build your own ships or equipment. You can find refineries at most stations. Experienced miners get way more efficient yields from their ore. So that's something you can work towards. Another asteroid successfully depleted. We better close in on that rock then. Yeah, so we'll hit approach on this next one. We still got our uh, afterburner on.
Now we're going to hit orbit on this one. Because I do not like to stop. I really like to kind of keep moving. The signal is exceptionally strong in this location. Let's stop the ship here. Well, since this is a tutorial, I guess we can stop it. <laughs> but usually you do want to kind of keep moving if you're in a small ship. And one of the bigger, bigger ships, yeah, you can stay stopped. The signal appears to be emanating from the center of this asteroid. Target the asteroid and then lock onto it. All right, so we'll hold down control, left click. You can break this baby up. Just like that. We can whittle away at this asteroid without damaging whatever's broadcasting that signal. See what we got. Holy shit. I think we just found what we're looking for. signal source appears to be that wrecked frigate. This particular model is a Dramiel. Most notably, it bears a striking resemblance to the ships that attacked the cloning facility. The fact that the wreck is isolated leads me to believe that the Dramiel was sent to this location to serve as a scout ship. Well, we're not going to get any solid answers all the way over here. Let's move in. Approach the wreck. All right, so we'll hit approach. The signal is strongest in the vicinity of the Dramiel's cargo hold. Okay, so I guess we're going to open it up. So we'll left click it once and then we're going to open up cargo. I do love the feeling of striking gold. Go and grab whatever it is. We'll hit loot all. It appears to be a black box. A device designed to survive the destruction of the vessel carrying it. Such boxes can be used to record vital flight data, but also to store valuable items. That's nice and all, but can you open it? Negative, Elias. Captain, the box is protected by multiple layers of encryption. While it's theoretically possible to hack into such a container, you will need significantly more training in that skill before attempting such a feat. Don't think it's safe to crack it open here anyway. Where there's smoke, there's fire. One scout ship might mean they got friends lurking nearby. If we could trace that signal, so could someone else. Better get the box and whatever's in it back to Vesper. She'll know what to do. All right, so it says to select the station, so let's head back to station. Elias is correct, Captain. The box may contain the answers we need to discover why those unidentified ships attacked the cloning facility and why one was spying on this mining site. And so we'll hit approach or align to.
I don't want you out there alone. I'll send some of my best pilots back with you. Safety in numbers and all that. Wisely stated, Elias. Well-armed company will be most welcome. I do what I can. If someone went to the trouble of protecting whatever's in that box, it must be something valuable. I bet whoever sent that scout ship will be real salty that we got our hands on it. Stay sharp, Captain. Let's dock at the station. I'm certain Vespa is more than eager to see what we've found. And then we'll hit dock up top. It's all little basic controls and stuff. Welcome back, Captain. Elias tells me you've brought a gift. Sure did. Indeed we have, Miss Calatrix. And this gift comes wrapped in several layers of complex encryption. I'll pass that box along to our expert hackers. If they can't crack it open, no one can. Thank you for finding it. Air is once again in your debt. Elias also informs me that you're carrying a fair amount of ore. We can take that off your hands in exchange for some isk. Mind if I take a look? Captain, open your ship's cargo hold so Miss Calatrix can see what you've mined. Yeah, yeah. In order to sell the ore, you must first transfer it from the cargo hold to your item hanger. Okay, so we're just going to select it, click, left click it once, and left click and drag it into item hanger. Now, let's switch over to the item hanger. Select the ore to see what you can do with it. So we can right click it and then sell this item. In this instance, we want to sell it to Miss Calatrix. All right, so we're going to sell immediate, I guess. Usually you would go in here and then switch this up to something to, if you want to put in an actual sell order. But since we're selling immediately. Nearly done. All that's left is to confirm the sale by selecting the appropriate button. Sure. That's a nice haul you've got there. I've transferred the ISK to your wallet. I think you'll find I've been more than generous. All right, we'll check the wallet, our wallet tab here. In your wallet, you can view the total balance of ISK in your possession. Yeah, you can view your balance, of course, and then transactions, anything you've bought, in, anything like that. Okay, next. Your recent market transactions will show you how much ISK you acquired by selling the ore. Okay, let's check that out. The highlighted entry shows how much money you received from air in exchange for the ore. So we see for 250 units, we, we got 28,500 ISK. The wallet offers a wealth of information. It provides a convenient location to view your recent transactions, track your market history, or audit your accounts. Yeah, same thing I was talking about. Whenever an item is sold in New Eden, a tax is applied to that sale. The market entry displays your most recent transaction tax. Once you've finished gazing at your newfound riches, close your wallet and inventory. It's time we turned our attention to a more pressing issue. The mysterious box we discovered at the mining site. Captain, I trust you'll keep quiet about the wrecked scout ship. So long as whoever was spying on us hasn't realized we found it, Air will have the upper hand. As good as they are, it'll take some time for my team to hack through the encryptions on the box. You might as well use this time to explore what New Eden has to offer. Have you checked out the agency yet? It's the best way to find things to do. And so we'll move you over here. 
And then let's check out the uh, the agency tab here on the left side. Miss Calatrix is right, Captain. In the agency, you'll be able to peruse a variety of activities, many of which will help you grow as a capsuleer. If mining tickled your fancy, as the saying goes, you might be interested in viewing the agency's dedicated resource harvesting section. That's right here, resource harvesting. As you can see, there are a variety of options available to you. If you enjoyed your time mining with Elias, you might find asteroid belts and or anomalies worthy of pursuit. All right, agents and mission. Elias spoke highly of your knack for mining, almost as highly as Balin did of your prowess in combat. It's clear you've got potential, Captain. I can put you in touch with a few people who can help you grow that potential into something great. You can find them in the agency under Career Agents. All right, let's check out the Career Agents. I suggest you take a moment to familiarize yourself with what each career agent has to offer. They specialize in various forms of combat, industry, and exploration. Missions provided by career agents offer a variety of rewards, including new skills, ships, modules, and money in the form of ISK, making them both lucrative and educational. No matter what path you choose, you will find a career agent who can help you walk it. You can even explore multiple paths if you wish. Once you've chosen an agent, set your destination. Okay, so these are all the agents here. Now this is just pretty much what you want to do. Build your fortune, industrialist, explorer, producer, enforcer. So eventually we do, we do want to do them all. If you're a new player, I would highly recommend you do every single career agent because you will get money. You will get a lot of free stuff. They will give you a lot of free ships. Um, and plus it gives you more opportunities to kind of hone your skills, you know, get used to the game, flying, combat, doing all that stuff and at the same time you're going to make a little bit of money so let's start off with the top one and uh we can start off from there so we can hit set destination once we select so i picked enforcer and hit set destination now let's close the agency there is one last question i would like to ask miss calatrix have there been any developments in the investigation since we last spoke? Our investigation is still in the early stages, but I have two theories. The attack may have been motivated by simple greed. Air has no shortage of competitors. Some would kill to acquire our groundbreaking technology, literally. A more worrying possibility is that someone is trying to stop us from pursuing our research. While Air takes pride in disrupting the corporate tech scene, there are those who think we push the limits of innovation too far. The technology suppression laws in New Eden are draconian, if you ask me. Here's hoping this mystery box has the answers we need. Once my team has cracked it open, I'll be in touch. Much appreciated, Miss Calatrix. I await any and all updates with bated breath. Metaphorically speaking, of course, I don't breathe. Captain, when you're ready, we can undock and begin the next phase of our journey. I do wonder how you'll die next. I suppose that is what ancient philosophers called morbid curiosity. Yep, that is. <laughs> so we don't have anything here. Alright, so since we're traveling somewhere else, let's uh, give that a go. So let's undock. Let's travel to that next destination.
Now that no one is actively trying to kill us, I will teach you how to navigate in space. The primary mode of interstellar travel through New Eden is via Stargates. We will proceed to our destination through these Stargates. First, select the destination I've highlighted in your overview. All right, so we'll bring this down here a little bit. That way we can kind of, since we have our route planned out already, since we set destination, so it shows we got three jumps for, for it total. So here on your overview, you'll always get, if you do have a route set, you will always see your, uh, uh, your destination in yellow. Stargates are also called jump gates because of the way ships seem to jump between distant locations. Now, initiate jumping to your destination. Okay, so we're just going to select it and then jump. After that rousing introduction to New Eden, it's nice to be in space without the threat of imminent peril. Though this is New Eden, peril often approaches when you least expect it. So I guess we're travel to our first agent and uh, should be pretty simple going gate to gate. Stargates are also called jump gates because of the way ships seem to jump between distant locations. Now initiate jumping to your destination. All right, so we got our yellow destination. Select it. It jumped. I don't mean to unsettle you, Captain. You've already proven yourself capable in battle. I'm certain you can handle whatever New Eden throws your way. And if you cannot, at least you are immortal. You can be reborn into a new clone body to try again. I believe this is what humans call optimism. Stargates are also called jump gates because of the way ships seem to jump between distant locations. Now, initiate jumping to your destination. All right, so we'll continue on. Select the destination. Stargates are also Now that no one is actively trying to kill us, I will teach you how to navigate in space. According to archaeological findings, New Eden was first settled by humans over 15,000 years ago. Life must have been very difficult for those early settlers. Carbon-based life forms are stunningly fragile. With the right pressure, a human's vertebrae will snap like a twig. So up here guys if you want to know what the uh, hotkey is so for jumping is D you know he's uh left click it make sure it's selected and hit D on your keyboard and instead of having to mouse click every every button there I would highly suggest you learn the hotkeys time to land captain initiate docking sequence So we'll put that to the test here. So we select the station and then we're going to hit D on the keyboard. Now your ship will align and jump over there and it'll dock up automatically.
to contact a career agent, you must first access the agency. All right, so let's uh, get back into the agency tab here. Let's move Aura down here a little bit. Well remembered, Captain. I knew you would be quick to learn. Now don't be shy. Begin a conversation with an agent. I'm sure they will love you. And if they don't, they will simply have to tolerate you. <laughs> All right, so we'll make sure that's clicked and let's start up a conversation here. Your choice of career agent will not limit you in any way. You can choose to work with multiple agents, but let's focus on just one for now. To begin the next phase of what I'm sure will be an illustrious career, accept a mission. All right, guys. So let's accept this mission and uh, let's see how it goes. So looks like we're up against uh, Garistas. And uh, rewards looks like they're going to give us some uh, 75 millimeter Gatling rail ones. And they'll give us some bonus ammo if we do it within five hours, which is shouldn't be a problem at all. So let's go ahead and hit accept here. Now, let's tidy up our display, shall we? Close the agency and agent conversation windows. I right, will close them. And then let's close this one. Career agents offer adventures designed to hone your skills. Air has provided a skill plan unique to each agent to assist with your progress. Since we always want to have a skill in training, Let's dive into one of those plans. All right. So I had some skill training going on since what, how she mentioned that she'd always have some skills training. So always have some skills going. For your chosen career path, you will want to train the Air Enforcer skill plan. The Air Enforcer skill plan. And, and, uh, but the thing is that... All right, so... All right, so skill plans will go over here, Enforcer. So she wants us to do the Air Caldari Enforcer. You can view the contents of each skill plan by selecting the aptly named Show Skill Plan Contents button. All right, so since we're in the tutorial, we can go ahead and uh, track plan. Let's, let's actually show... All good Capsuleers will always have a skill in training. And you are a good Capsuleer, are you not? To prove to me what a good Capsuleer you are, add the skills to your queue and begin training them. Alright, so we'll start training them. We had a lot of these, a uh, majority of these we have already set to train, but I wonder if it'll put them to the top of the list. Using skill plans to guide your progression, will make your life easier and prove rewarding. As you explore different career opportunities, you will find skill plans tailored to match your evolving goals. Career agents will sometimes reward capsuleers with new ships. It is wise to have the skills required for those ships in your training queue. We're almost ready to embark on our new adventure. Now is the perfect time to close any windows you no longer need on your display. Details regarding the mission you accepted from the career agent are displayed on the info panel. Here, you can view the mission briefing, objectives and rewards. Should you ever need to be reminded of any of those details, you can always check the info panel. I must say, Captain, you've handled yourself remarkably well. Though there are thousands of copies of Aura in New Eden, I am glad to be your Aura. Have I said too much? My sentimentality protocols may need adjusting. Now, it's time for you to venture out into the stars. Go forth. And show New Eden what you are truly made of. All right. So we brought up everything now. Now we got everything unlocked practically. 
Uh, we got the Garista's Hunt here. I don't think we need that at the moment. Uh, test your might, the Proving Grounds. We don't need that at the moment. Opportunities. So we can, we don't need that. We just need the Agent. All right, perfect. Offers. Let's get rid of this. Yeah, we'll get rid of that. Okay, so it doesn't look like it's uh, too much. Uh, clear the pirates from the asteroid belt. As your agent has required on behalf of the group of miners. Alright. Let's do this. So we'll close that window. I'm wondering if I have to check all those so you can get rid of that and get rid of the opportunities. The route we need and uh, I think we need to test your might there. We can get rid of those. We can move these to the side. Just left click and drag them over that way. You, you can have those uh, kind of ready to untick. Alright, so let's warp to location. Warp drive active. In local. I'm surprised there's like a... Uh, it's pretty quiet. Uh, I thought I, for a second, I thought it had the sound off. It, it just got really, really quiet. <laughs> All right. So we have the, uh, All right, so I'm going to switch over to my PVE tab here. So on the overview, um, I've created my my own overview settings here. We can go into that later on, but right now it's not important. But let's go ahead and uh, lock up this first one. That's the closest. Let's approach them just to get into range here. And then we're optimal range about 5,000. So once we get into 5,000, we'll go ahead and uh, we can get in and we'll orbit, start shooting them. Jeez, what's up with the uh, uh, world? No wonder it was uh pretty quiet. There we go. Sorry about that, guys. I thought it. Uh, I, I guess it's off by default. And right, let's go for this guy next. He's the next closest here. So I'm kind of have it filtered to uh, distance so that we show the the closest enemy up top. All these other guys we can lock up. We'll approach these guys here. We got our afterburners going up. Get closer to about 5,000. Or at least close to it. And there we go. Let's orbit. Now let's uh, go next one. 
hit approach. Now that we're getting a little bit closer, I'll hit orbit and then we'll start shooting. We'll kind of get ready for the next one. We'll start locking him up. So we have him. We'll hit orbit right off the bat since he's already close enough. We'll start shooting. Would be a lot more helpful if we had a web. Okay. So let's approach this rack over here. And I, so far, so good. So looks like we finished up the mission here. So we can go in here and read details. So read details. Now we have the little green check mark right here next to the objective. So that means we did complete it and we're good to go to dock up. Well, usually the, let's see what this wreck has inside of it. I mean, usually it probably won't be nothing valuable, but it's always good to start salvaging everything, looting everything. That way you'd be able to, uh, later down the road, go ahead and sell it. That way you can make a little bit of extra money. Because you'll need all the money you can get in the beginning. Which is a good idea. I always try. Later on we'll go into a little bit more detail. Into other methods and other ways to. You know loot easier. Have an easier time in doing all that stuff. Let's check the rack. We got a little cat battery I think it was. Yeah remote capacitor transfer. Alright. All right, let's so let's dock up. Let's hit the button right here where it says dock up. Since we're all done here, see, I got loot here, a tab for loot, and they're all they're all empty, so we don't have nothing else here. We'll go back to general. What is, uh, no, that's too, way too, I was trying to adjust the Neocom here. Docking permission requested. Docking request accepted. Oh, uh, the agency window is what it is. Okay. I was wondering what was flashing up there. I was like, why is it flashing? But it's due because of the uh, agency window there. get rid of all those all right so now let's start a conversation here and then let's hit up a uh, complete mission and now our standings went up towards this agent which is good all right now from here we he's already offering us the uh, the second one so let's let's request the mission And then this is going to be part two out of ten. So we're going to leave it there for this episode, guys. When we come back, we'll continue on where we left off. I want to thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you guys are enjoying. Drop your thoughts down in the comments. You know, any critiques, anything that, you know, will help me and help everybody else out. All the new pilots. And uh, I hope you guys are enjoying it. Hit that like button on your way out. I want to thank you so much for watching. And we'll catch you on the next video, guys. Peace out.